Hey friends, Patrick here and welcome to this quick tutorial how maybe professionals want to deploy their Blazor web applications. And maybe this is also the fastest way, at least for me, this is the simplest, easiest and fastest way to deploy your Blazor web app. Doesn't really matter if it's a static web app or a new full fledged web application with interactivity, all the new render modes, database, whatnot. This is the way to go. All right. So I'm sure not everyone is doing it, doing it that way, but I am pretty sure that this is a great way and also a professional way to deploy your web applications with Blazor.net 8. And where are we going to deploy them? Of course, to Azure, but there are still, of course, also platforms where you can deploy them too. Now, what do we have here? This is a really simple Blazor web application. I used the uh, new web app template here in .NET 8. And when I run this, already did that actually, then you will see this is the result, the landing page of the uh, .NET Web Academy. And what a coincidence, so .NET Web Academy is currently open for enrollment, but just for two more days, so be quick. Link is in the video description, so there you can get all the information about this new .NET Web Academy all things .NET web development related, Blazor, of course, and the new framework identity. We've got courses, we've got challenges, the new vibrant community, lots and lots of great stuff. So maybe you wanna check it out. Link in the video description. Thank you very much for considering. But now how can we deploy that stuff? You see it here, I've got components, there's a lot to or a lot of ways to improve this application, of course, for instance, we have here a component called FAQs. And I uh, didn't have the time yet to, uh, well, remove this repeated code in the end, and use a single component for each FAQ, for instance. So of course, lots of stuff to improve that. But wouldn't it be great if we have kind of a history, and whenever we want to save our progress and already deploy that, then maybe we would have some automatic way to do this, meaning continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. That said, what we can do, we can push this to a repository, of course. And the best way, in my opinion, is currently, and if it also works in your corporation, not sure about that, in your team, let's say, best way would be to just create a Git repository on GitHub. So make sure to add your GitHub account to Visual Studio. So whenever you do this, you have Git installed on your machine, you are using Visual Studio, then you go to add to source control, and then you have a couple of options here. I'm not using Azure DevOps, although I will use Azure then in the end to deploy that, but I will choose GitHub here. And then when you go here and no GitHub account is connected, you see it here, you can always add a new account. And when this is done, you see the owner, I only have this one owner here. Then I can give this repository a name. Typically, it's the name of your solution. In that case, also .NET Web Academy description. And we can uh, choose if this is a private or public repository. It doesn't have to be public. If you want to deploy it with Azure, can be private as well. So let's just hit Create and Push. And when this is done, we can, of course, go to our repository website in the browser, there it is already. All right, so now this is pushed, you already see here. Now, this is what we've done. And we have all the folders, all the code. And the great thing also is that Visual Studio automatically adds the git ignore and git attributes files. If you don't know what that is, well, tell me that in the comments, I'm happy to create another video about that. But we will also discuss this in the academy, of course. Anyways, when this is done, then we can already go to Azure. So here's my account in essence. And what we want to do is we want to create a new web app. Well, we're using a Blazor web app. So it makes sense to also create a web app. Just a side note, if you for instance, this was a landing page, right, I showed you and if you also just want to use a landing page, a static page, let's say, then you can also use a static web app. So you can create a static web app here in Azure. The uh, way to deploy it then is pretty much exactly the same. Because the uh, most important thing here when you're using a GitHub repository, you will see here the step deployment, because there we will connect the GitHub repository with Azure, and then a lot of magic is happening with the help of GitHub actions. But let's do it one step after another. So we have a subscription here. And when you're new to Azure, when you want to create a new account, you have a free option available. So 
you can try this out totally free. And also you see here the database step, there is a new option to run a free database in Azure. At least I heard that, tried it a couple months ago already. I hope this is still true. If not, tell me in the comments. All right, so we've got the Azure subscription one. It's a great name. We can create a new resource group. And of course we wanna give this thing a name. So let's just say .NET Web Academy. You see it here, I already have a static one available. I tried it before. That's why I have this .NET Web Academy group available. So .NET Web Academy, it is great name, I think. So now next part is publish. So here I say coach, I wanna publish coach. All right, so let's just leave it at that. Then we set the uh, runtime stack, which is in my case, the brand new .NET 8. And then regarding the operating system, well, I leave this up to you, but in the end, in my experience, Linux is way less expensive to run and it is faster regarding deployment. So if it's not totally necessary that you choose Windows here as an operating system, you can uh, select Linux here, it is faster regarding the deployment and also should be cheaper to run. We've got a region, East US is great for me. And then the Linux plan, as you can see here, I already got one and the basic plan works for me. Now this is a totally different chapter. So maybe if you wanna dive deeper there, please have a look yourself or tell me in the comments, maybe I can do a video about that as well but I'm sure you will find the right resources there. Okay, that's the first step. Then we've got database. We don't need a database, so we can jump already to deployment. And what I wanna use here is continuous deployment. And you can see it here already, enable GitHub Actions to continuously deploy your application. This means as soon as we commit a change and push it to our repository, magic is happening. We will see a workflow where this thing is automatically deployed to our Azure Web App. So let's enable that. And as you can see here, already connected similar to Visual Studio, my GitHub account to Azure. So you can change the account, cr create a new one, add a new one here, then pretty much the same stuff. We have the organization and then repositories. I've got some repositories here. So let's say .NET Web Academy, not the static one. This one now, this is the new one. You can choose a branch, of course. And then we can, if you want to preview the file, because out of that, a YAML file will be created by Azure and then also added to the Git, uh, GitHub repository. That's interesting, right? So now we've got networking, monitoring tags, not interesting for us. We have now review and create as the last step. We can have a look here again, but I think the most important part here now is really our repository. So we will be able to use continuous integration and deployment within GitHub and Azure. So now let's just hit create and this will take a while. So let me edit this video and I will forward then to the most important parts, of course. All right, deployment succeeded. So now we can go to the resource and there we will see here, up there you see the GitHub project. So there again is the repository. I'm gonna now open the repository again. Let me refresh this. Then you will see we've got this new folder here, GitHub Workflows, and there you'll find the new YAML file. This is what I was talking about earlier. So here you see all the steps, what is happening actually during building and deployment. So you can check that out. And the other interesting thing is here, now you will see this cute little bubble here. So something is happening. Some checks haven't completed yet, but as you can see now, build and deploy ASP.NET Core app to Azure Web App. Dozen Web Academy deploy. We can go to details, for instance, this is currently running and this also takes a while to complete. So uh, let me fast forward that as well. All right, and we see complete job. And here again is the URL. So maybe let's just open that in a new tab. And there it is, took a while to load, but here is now the landing page. Everything is working as it was working locally as well. That was quick, right? So I recorded for 10 minutes and in only 10 minutes, we were able to do all that. So it was, in my opinion, really easy, simple and fast and maybe also professional, right? Tell me in the comments what you think about that way to deploy your Blazor web applications. If you learned something, guys, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. And again, maybe you wanna check out the Dungeon Web Academy, links in the video description. Thank you so much for considering and thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.